In today's episode of the Pathfunk Presents podcast, I have an interesting guest here with me today. I'm with Pete Bennett, and he's hailing over from the team at Pictory. He's the head of growth at Pictory, and Pictory uses AI to easily basically convert long-form video and text into short branded videos for social media. Um, you know, actually, a podcast is probably a prime example of this, how this could be reused. Uh, uh, pushing it out into, into social media. So Bennett, I'm really uh, too interested to, uh, to talk with Pete uh, today about what's going on at Pictory, how he's thinking about growth and a little bit about his journey in growth as well. So welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for the invite. And uh, yes, you're right. This sort of uh, environment is perfect for us because we um, we edit uh, podcasts for, for podcasters. So uh, happy to set you up with an account. I will pick you up on that one. That's for sure. So, um, yeah, maybe before we jump even deeper, give us at first like a, a 360 overview. Like, was, what is Pictory all about in your own words? Well, Pictory really is designed to help people who um, are not necessarily professional video editors, but are content creators, people who uh, do webinars, uh, do podcasts, or want to produce videos directly from text, either blog posts or uh, scripts that they've written specifically to make a video. So uh, we take the complexity and we take the technology out of the equation and replace it with our AI that does most of the heavy lifting. So for instance, if you've got a, a blog post and you'd like to turn that into a video, all we need is the URL of the blog post and the rest of it um, we'll take care of in the back end with a few mouse clicks, really. Very cool. And maybe tell us um, who is typically using it? Like what are sort of, we mentioned podcasts, what is sort of the typical use cases? Uh, where do you see, you know, most practical use? And then, you know, in terms of maybe, I don't know, companies and roles, like who's benefiting most? Yeah, at the moment, um, this year, we're targeting predominantly individual creators. So our biggest audience is probably YouTube creators who want to produce faceless channels for YouTube. In other words, you know, they may have knowledge that they want to impart to an audience, but they don't necessarily want to go to the expense of having green screens, cameras, editors. So you know, if you wanted to produce a video on, I mean, the, the classic thing would be I don't know, dog training or something, you know, the, the 10 tips you must know to um, train your Labrador, then if you can write the script, we can turn it into a video. And we use Storyblocks, which is a, a huge library of uh, over 3 million or so video clips to pull in images using AI that match what's being said in the video. Um, if you've never tried to produce a video before, you may not realize just how long it can take to make even a very short video. Uh, we say that people who have had no video experience can produce their first video within uh, 10 minutes and 10 minutes is at the outside often quicker than that super interesting i mean i if, even if you go through youtube you will find a lot of videos that have a lot of views actually being generated in that type of format right where you have insights yeah. plus uh, like stock imagery that is combining together yeah in a way making the story very cool um so that's right? at the moment but obviously um where we we're going more and more is into people who are um doing podcasts because not only can we make text into video we can also edit video using text so if we were to upload this recording for instance it would transcribe the recording into text and then if you deleted uh, the text it would delete the bits automatically from the video <clears throat> or we can remove all the silences we can remove all the ums and errs so that's another use case and then course creators people who are educators who are producing stuff for publishing on Udemy and uh, other such platforms. So it's quite versatile. The, the, there's several different types of people that use this. And then next year, we want to move more into agencies. So people who are using our software to produce content for their clients rather than just for themselves. Mm -hmm. Very cool. OK, um, now, how do those creators and also moving forward, you know, podcasters and content managers, you know, hear about Pictory? Like, what's the typical way of somebody getting to know you guys? What's their journey like? At the moment, the only thing we're doing really is Google pay-per-click ads taking people to our website, which um, the current version of the website went up, I think it was 72 hours ago. So that's how fresh it is. We've just replaced it with a, a, a WordPress rebranded website um, we will be doing content marketing and later on we'll be doing uh, outreach type marketing once we start going into the business to business sector rather than the business to individual consumer sector mm -hmm. uh, but I, I my background is in seo and uh, content marketing to an extent so i think that will be where we'll concentrate this year 
Interesting. And um, you, actually, you mentioned you just re redid the website. Maybe tell me, like, what would you what was sort of when you analyzed the website going through? What sort of was you know sort of something that you wanted to improve with a new page? Like when you were re because we have a lot of marketers listening in, they're always very critical about their pages. Like, what's something that you discovered about the old page that you definitely wanted to to change in the new one? Well, I think making a website attractive to the search engines is something that you have to do from the ground up. So our original website that was developed by um, the, um, the founders of the company was a website that was developed on WordPress, but it wasn't really structured using the Google um, latent semantic indexing type mm -hmm. structure where you have silos of content. I'll just stop my Discord popping away there. We have silos of content, which are very closely themed to the keywords and the avatars that you're um, targeting. What we've done now, if you go to pictory.ai, is we have a whole uh, menu, a set of menus, which are all about the types of people. So YouTube creators, coaches, podcasters, etc. We also have another um, silo of content, which is all about the features and the benefits. Um, and then we'll have a, a huge blog, um, which will be searchable and indexed, which will predominantly cover questions and answers, not just about our product, but about video creation in general. Mm -hmm. um, and that will, um, along with, this can get very propeller head, but along with schema.org and proper markup on those pages, um, I'm envisaging that we will be able to beat some of the higher ranking sites at the moment without too many backlinks. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Like, what's the typical, you mentioned this, uh, that the site wasn't fully structured for SEO, maybe for people who are currently, you know, taking on pages, that a lot of marketers taking on pages, like what's the key things that they should check for in your opinion, you know, when they're, you know, they inherit a page, like you were, you were doing, like, what's the key things that you were checking? Yeah, I think the main things are the, the kind of standard fare along the lines of the H1 and H2 type tagging, which is fairly simple, but then the content itself needs to be written so that it's, um, well interlinked internally within the website you need to have a um, an up-to-date site map we use something called yoast which is a, a very popular plugin for doing that kind of thing um, but also you need to you need to mark the pages up using schema.org and that's something that a lot of people perhaps don't realize um, initially that it, you know would be beneficial and then also at the risk of blowing our own trumpet again having rich media snippets embedded within the web page video particularly um, can really help um, with SEO, particularly if you're uh, structuring the pages so that they're in a question and answer type um, structure. So th th think of um, a rich media type FAQ set mm -hmm. and you're doing quite well. I used to own a translation company and we were beating Wikipedia on many of the quite contentious or, or highly targeted keywords using that structure. Uh, and that's what I intend to bring to Pictory. Very cool. Well, very, uh, that's, I think it's a very insightful one. So FAQ kind of format with video answers yeah, uh, is what you're saying. Okay. Is that yeah. because uh, videos are being pulled as answers into the search? Okay. Well, Google likes um, video content um, because it's providing a, a richer experience for the people that are searching for answers to questions. So mm -hmm. um, if you have video and your competitors don't, and you've marked it up with the correct schema, then Google is going to give you priority over them. Typically, I mean, Google's a law unto itself, isn't it? But all you can do is play the probability game. And having a, a big site, a fat site with lots of content properly structured is the way to go. And then you don't actually need too many people to go out and solicit links, because if you're providing valuable content, other people will find you and then share the links organically. Got you. No, that makes a whole lot of sense. Do you have an example page if people are curious in that concept where they could find a great FAQ section like that? Anything uh, off the top of mind? Otherwise, we add it into the show sections, uh, show notes afterwards. Yeah. Well, rather than waste your time now, I'll send you. I'll send you some examples. I think. Very cool. Very good. Yeah. No. Um, what have you learned? I mean, you've been in uh, in growth uh, over uh, a, a while. You've been in marketing. And um, what have you learned when we, you know, maybe last piece on the website before we move move on? What have you learned when it comes to sort of conversions? You know, you, you you mentioned a lot of elements on how to get people to the page. Is there any methods, approaches, tools that you've you know learned that help you to understand why people do or do not convert, or approaches how to increase conversions? What what have you been? Yeah, I mean, I think throughout my career, and I've only been with Pictory since the beginning of this year, incidentally, so it's yep. early days for me in this company, but throughout my career, um, it's always been with websites is have a single most wanted action. So um, MWA, as we call it, most wanted action. So be very clear when people come to your website, 
um, what you want them to do. Don't offer them too many choices because confused buyers don't. So if you give choices and people don't know which, which of two, three, five, ten choices to go, rather than choose one of them, they'll choose none of them. So if you go to our website, our entire website is designed to get people to sign up. That's it. We don't do anything else. It's a single action. Um, and that's the only reason for having the website, to be honest, is to get people to sign up. Is that interesting saying, if you confuse, you lose. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I see it all of the time. Often, less is more. Makes sense. Um, maybe before we move on, you mentioned you're, you're running ads quite a bit. Um, it has been popping up on the show recently, the, the cookie-less uh, future, right? Retargeting becoming more challenging if third-party cookies are going to be excluded from the browsers, I'd say probably what ne next year at some point. Yeah. Is that a topic, you know, marketers in your industry, in your area already talk about what is, what is bubbling up? Because it has been showing up as a theme in the podcast. Yeah, it's something which I, I have yet to fully address, but I know certainly... Um, in the Facebook land, retargeting is um, is becoming a, a problem. Um, but what we're attempting to do is to do our own type of retargeting using marketing automation. So going back to that most wanted action, if we can get people to sign up, then using other software, which I won't disclose because um, <laughs> we want the competitive advantage, um, we will be able to, to find out what people are doing on our website and find out when they're coming back and then retarget them ourselves rather than having to rely upon platform retargeting. Mm -hmm. um, but you are right. This is going to be a big shakeup in the industry because I'm sure many people watching this know that, that the main um, time when you convert is not on the initial advert. It's on the retargeting when they come back. So it is going to get challenging, but I believe there are opportunities for people that know how to work around it. And I'm it's like, hands up still getting my head around some of the details on this. Yeah, makes sense. Let's switch gears a little bit. I want to learn about you as a, as a growth leader. Um, what, what we found super interesting is to you know figure out what's a topic that you know somebody in your role recently really deep dived in. Like, what was a topic that you were researching recently where you found that's important for growth? Yeah, one of the things that I've always been really keen on is to have an emotional engagement with uh, prospects. You'll notice on my backdrop here, um, I have a little cute octopus. We call him Pickford. Now prior to this time last week we didn't have any kind of mascot or any kind of um, identifiable personality we were very corporate so the idea of of having an emotional connection with the target audience is that we're not competing um, on an a b matrix comparison on features and benefits what we're doing is inviting people into a world where there is some personality there is some support um, there's a certain amount of quirkiness without being trivial, and we want to build that connection with with the brand. Um, so we're at, it take what doing that takes you out of the commodity market because there's always going to be somebody who can knock a couple of cents off the price and beat you on price, and that's a race to the bottom. Never ever ever get involved in a price war; you can't win it. There's always going to be somebody who has an extra bell and an extra whistle, and you know if you're doing a, a comparison, then you you lose on that. But if people feel that they're in safe hands and they feel that they're with people who have their best interests at heart and are prepared to change the software and grow with them, then you've kind of got them for life, in my experience. Um, everybody, everybody will deny this, I guess, but everybody buys um, based on emotion and then justifies on facts. That makes a whole lot of sense. I have some rapid fire question in the end to wrap up the interview for you today. Are you ready for those? Yeah, okay, give it a go. What's the last book you read? Uh, last book I read, I can't remember because I don't read. I listen to them on Audible. So I'll tell you the last book that I read. And it was actually a, a very, very good book. It's called Alchemy. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll find out who it was by. Roy Sutherland, Alchemy. Mm -hmm. It's all, all about marketing and uh, counterintuitive things that make people buy. What's one single thing that your company focused on the most at the moment? Um, the thing we're concentrating most on is adding uh, templates and things into the software to save people even more time um, and allow us to address verticals such as real estate or uh, other sort of verticals within the market. If there would be no boundaries in tech, what's the one thing you would fix for your role today? Um, 
I think I would have a, a bigger team of people who already know what they're doing because it's actually quite hard to go out and hire people who get this stuff. What's the last thing that kept you awake at night about the company? <laughs> Bringing the website up in the early hours of Sunday morning. Um, but it was well worth it. For the very last question, I would like to do some time travel, uh, if you allow, if we go back to the days of the University of Bradford. <laughs> right now you're heading out of uh, education into the world of business, growth, technology. What's the one advice you would give yourself for your journey? Um, Apart from don't lend people money, give it to them because it costs the same and you keep your friends. Um, probably it would be don't stay in corporate too long. I did 10 years working for Exxon and it, it was a brilliant decade, but I really should have got out there because I got too comfortable. So start your entrepreneurial journey early. <laughs> would be it. Oh, oh yeah, and buy some Bitcoin. That's all you need to do. Go back 10 years, buy some Bitcoin. <laughs> Very good. Peter, really appreciate you took the time with us today to be a guest on Platform Presents. I want to give you the very last word. If somebody would be forgetting all that we discussed uh, on Pictory today, what's the one thing they should remember? Uh, well, the one thing I would say is if you're thinking about stop, make, starting to make videos, stop thinking about it and start doing it. Go to Pictory, sign up for a free trial, and we're here to support you on your journey uh, to becoming a video star. Thanks a lot for being a guest on Platform Presents. Thank you.